Um, but you said, and here's of course where I disagree, that um, we know, you, 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 you have spoken with a kind of certainty about how we know Violence did this, 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 and this. It was good and good and good and good. And if people would not have acted violently, uh, if people would have acted non-violently, it would have been bad, it would have been bad, it would have been you, you know, you speak with confidence about, about the good done by violence and the harm that would have been done by non-violence or that is done by non-violence. And I don't think we can, any of us, speak that confidently because we're speaking about what we literally cannot know. We're speaking about hypotheticals. We, you know, history, it, you know, Michael Oshot that says that historians often use history as a mannequin, you know, not a mannequin, but a, what are these things? A a dummy. Dummy. Like the way a ventriloquist uses a, a dummy. You know, we make it say what we want it to say. And you know, historians aren't the only people who do that, you know? We all fall into that far too easily, far too often. We just don't know, we just don't know what would have happened if, then and there, in this case or that, if something different would have been done. We just don't know. And so, I'm quite willing to say, yes, on occasion, in circumstances, we see violence do certain good things. It's immediate, it's clear, but I'm not willing to claim, make these large certain claims about what violence always does or about what nonviolence always does because in fact if something happens in a historical episode X, then all the non-X's that might have happened did not happen. And we cannot say what all of those non-X's would have brought about. We just can't do that. Um, well, then I would say this, that argument cuts both ways. And because it cuts both ways, every time you say, well, look what nonviolence brought, um, then it cuts both ways. The, the e easy response is yes, but if they would have engaged in revolutionary violence, um, it certainly would have been better. Or, or at least you, don't, you can't know, right, the negative claim. You can't know that revolutionary violence would have been better. Because if you're going to make an argument, which, fine, you know, counterfactuals are always difficult. I'm more than willing to concede that. But to ground that as a position, which is fine, but it, again, it's a position that cuts both ways. And I want to be clear, I'm not talking about all violence in all times, sure. acts in all ways. Um, I, I would say it's specific forms of violence that have to have specific forms of conditions. Um, just as I was saying earlier, um, the weather ground, uh, underground, I, I mean, and they did their best to avoid lethal violence. But <coughs> them blowing up buildings, you know, whether anyone was hurt or not, is morally irresponsible. And it's morally irresponsible because they had no idea how it would actually lead to anything. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think you and I are close in a lot of ways, and I, and I, I do know it cuts both ways. It's just that I, I may, maybe I don't sound like it, but I, I may be arrogantly, but I think I have a more humility about my views than you have about yours, you know? Just maybe I'm wrong. But I, I do know it cuts both ways, and I tried to make that clear. But, I, but I, I, I'm just willing to say, and I have a theological view and you don't, and that's the, that's the big difference between us, right? Is I just think something is true about where the, the, what the universe is like and where it's going that you don't think we could know. Even if it were true, we wouldn't know it. And, and I, that's the fundamental uh, difference we have, of course. Yeah, I was, uh, no, I, get off that, that topic. I was curious what you meant when you said that you view capitalism as a form of violence. Uh, I'm curious what you mean by that. Okay. Well, I, I think, I'm gonna be very brief about this very and very simple about it, but I, I suspect many of you uh, have to do a lot of reading, a lot of research, and a lot of thinking about this, and to be very articulate about it in your own way. But I think that capitalism is a is an order order of exchange based upon uh, fundamental premises which are intrinsically involved. The profit motive, the idea that people earn what they deserve, deserve what they earn. 
uh, and and um, that uh, the market for all of its flaws is the most fair uh, order of exchange we can create, and that labor uh, uh, needs to be kept as cheap. And uh, I'll just stop there. But th those are premises that I believe are all intrinsic to capitalism. That's, that they are, they are, they are a necessary part of what capitalism is. And I believe that all of those claims I just made are violent. That the, the, the results of them, the the manifestation of them, are violent. It it allows people to justify gross inequality. For example, and that's a, a moral affront to me. Gross inequality is is a moral affront to me. And I think that um, uh, any uh, human suffering that is avoidable and non-trite, I don't mean, you know, you went to a bad movie and you got bad popcorn and it ruined your night, right? I mean, any, any, any serious suffering that is avoidable and it's not avoided is a form of violence. So injustice and domination and oppression and, and gross inequality are forms of violence. They kill people. They murder people. And I'd rather be shot in the head than starve to death. How about you? Uh, you know, so, I mean, that's what I mean. And I, and I think capitalism does that as a, as a system, again, as a structure, not that there aren't some people whose lives are you know, great because of capitalism, of course that's true. It's not that some people's lives aren't made a bit better by capitalism, of course that's true. There are marginal gains and so on, of course. But as a system or as a structure, I, I believe that capitalism is a form of violence. And, and by the way, I just think it's another mistake to talk about um, you know, I direct a peace and justice studies program, but there's a problem about differentiating peace and justice and on one hand and violence and injustice on the other. I think we have to do better work at seeing injustice as a form of violence and peace as a form of, we do better seeing peace as a form of nonviolence, but especially injustice as a form of violence. Thank you. Oh, okay. You mentioned the concept of desert, of people deserving things. Yeah. Um, that implies that either we or some um, teolo teleological truth system or some god of some kind uh -huh. would uh, then place a judgment. That there's a judgment that can be placed about what people deserve and what they don't deserve. Right. How does that relate to your views on violence? Okay. Uh, you've t you've uh, raised a very good, you know, problem. It's a big question. It's a great, great question because here's an interesting thing. All human beings, as far as I know, use language of desert. We, we all quite comfortably say things like, no, he really got it coming. Come. He deserved that. Or, you know, she didn't deserve that. You know, we're all very comfortable with that language. We, we actually think we know what people deserve and what they don't deserve especially ourselves. Uh, you know, we're all very damn certain of what we deserve, right? But I don't think there's any basis at all for making those judgments. I think it's a very strange thing about human beings that we all talk so comfortably about who deserves what. And there's no reason at all to make those judgments. We have no basis to make them except entirely arbitrary, socially constructed reasons that we just come up with. So I don't like language I hate it when, uh, you know, uh, you hear people talk like that, especially when they're legislators and you know, so on. When they, when they're, when they're, when their ideas of what people deserve really, you know, impacts our lives. I, I, you know, that worries me to say the very least. With, with your position clarified, maybe I can ask a more specific question. So, you make the claim that killing and perhaps permanent injury to anyone is wrong, at least narrow it down. Um, but is that because they don't deserve it, or is that for some other reason? 
I'm not sure if I understood the question. I said what? You, you make the claim that, that killing people or that permanent injury of some kind is wrong, that violence is oh, wrong. Oh, okay. But, that, but is that because these people don't deserve it, because no one deserves it because we're human beings? Or is that for some other reason? Because otherwise, I, I don't know. That gets messy to me. That seems like we might have some inconsistency. Yeah, I just avoid language of desert, so I wouldn't say no one deserves it. Okay. So I'd be more inclined to say the scary thing is, though, we all deserve it.